Grandma, is Grandad playing today? Yes, we both are, love. Why is he taking so long? He's having trouble with his dentures. They don't fit like they used to. Grandad, you're making us late. Need to get those dentures fixed, love. Go see Kanako. Susan and I worked really hard to build up the business. We're making a few careful investments too. And thinking about our family's future. Our next steps. But no rush. Right now we're just taking the scenic route. And making some memories together. This is Icy Law. Or Iclaw. We're lawyers, but we're also mums, dads, sons and daughters. We're people helping people. Need legal advice you can trust? We're here to make the big changes easy and the fine print simple, leaving you free to get on with enjoying the things that matter. Give us a call to see how we can help. Blue skies and sunshine on Sunday, October the 2nd at the Morrinsville Bowling Club for the Clinico Spring Classic, the inaugural event. We're about to start the second pairs event of the day. If you joined us on Bowls TV or on Pacifica TV around the islands, welcome into you the first pairs game that we had. So Tao Mutu and Blockhouse Bay play out a 10-all draw. This is a tournament where points count. And now we're about to see... Putardu of Judy Ma and Chen Nodia play a composite team of Jeff Anson, who's the skip out of Putardu, and Tony Gray from Hillcrest. So the Chen Nodia has thrown a rather long jack. And he will be uh, first up to bowl for Putardu, the young 25 year old farmer out of Bulmer's Landing. <clears throat> Stephen McIver, Barry Hooper in for this Clinico Spring Classic. Get your smile on for summer with Clinico Denture and Hearing. And it's a, a nice, tidy start from it's Chen, a, Barry. It's a lovely opening from Chen. Uh, he's got the, the green right. He's only just a little bit short of the jack. Now, this is Tony Gray, who plays out of the Hillcrest Club, playing in the composite today. Remember, this is the best of 12 ends. I mean, if we reflect on the game that we saw before, gosh, it was Blockers Bay out to a 6-2 lead, then it was a 9-8 behind. and I think they were 8-4 eight, eight, leading at one stage. It was, it was a crazy old game. If you are joining us for the first time today, it's worth noting that these greens are in, in impeccable condition, considering that in the last 48 hours, this tournament has dodged uh, a weather bullet. If, if you, for want of a better phrase, it's been it was pouring down last night, and the greenkeeper Trevor Lingard today brought the roller out to tr and to remove three at least three centimeters, I'm told, of water off the green, and he's done a stunning job. Well, I think it rained all Friday night, and nobody expected play on the Saturday first thing Saturday morning. He did a superb job Saturday morning, then on Saturday afternoon the heavens opened again. And it was, the green was flooded, and this morning you would hardly wonder where all the water's gone to. Kevin Hansen, the tournament director, uh, had said to me, look, don't be surprised if we were going to be playing this on the, the new $250,000 carpet green, which is, as, as, the, as you look at the pictures now, it's to the left-hand side and up on a different level. 
Uh, but Mother Nature has, has played her card, and it's a glorious day. In fact, it's quite, quite warm here. It is. And Chen's just bowled another a lovely ball, given a, a two-shot lead at this stage. But a lot can happen with another four balls each to come. Tony Gray, the lead for the composite team out of Hillcrest, the 68-year-old. Been playing for 25 years. And he has played very, very well. <laughs> he bowls rolled over. He will have the shot, or very close to it. Double check that here. I think that's Jeff Anson. Now he, you'll see he's out of the Putaratu club as well, but he is playing in this composite because this is a, a fours tournament. Break it down for us briefly, Barry. It's a fours tournament, but we split into pairs. It is a fours tournament. They play the first round as a fours game, and then the four splits into two pairs, and the two pairs play the team that they would have played as a four. Uh, in, in succession, because obviously you, you've got twice as many teams playing as a pair, and then for the last round of the day, it goes back to fours, and that was the uh, position yesterday. Today, it's more conventional and more uh, assured. This is Judy Ma, the skip for Putararu, four centre titles. Oh, hello. Now, we have mic'd up the skips here, so we can hear, we can hear the tactics, and that's a really good thing. She's already telling Chen what to do. So Judy Ma, four centre titles, looking for a gold Ju star. Judy probably uh, had an idea what she wanted to play when she went down that end. Um, probably just awaited confirmation from her partner, Chen. And she's played it particularly well, just a little bit overweight. Tell you what, Chen's pretty happy with that, though, I've got to say. So this is Jeff Anton, also of Putaradu Club. Let's not get him confused, but he is in the composite team. Got a great job, I've got to say. I said, what do you do? He says, I work on, I'm, I'm working in the electricity industry. I said, what do you do? He says, I work in power stations. Fantastic. Arapuni, Karapiro, fantastic job. And he's drawn a very nice bowl. Just short of the jack. Tumbles over. Hard to dislodge in that position. Judy changed her hand there and didn't allow for maybe uh, the movement room, on the green. How much room? Get the feeling Jeff's uh, sort of guy that. It's going to be a colourful character to watch. It's tidy. That's really tidy. Oh, oh wrong bias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should laugh, but she knows exactly what's going on there. And has probably forgotten that she got a little microphone on her. <laughs> Oh, no, she knows. She can see it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it may not have been a wrong bias, although she did change her hand from the from the backhand to the forehand. So it could have been a ah. wrong bias, but it looked as though it slipped out of her hand. Came out the side, Mike. And it had a, a bobble. Uh, it just wobbled its way. Well, isn't that funny? Because Judy's bowled a poor bowl. He's got... And Jeff's gone, ah, what's going on? So... That's the conclusion of the first end, and we'll get a, we'll get a, and that's two. Did I see two there? Two to the composite side. Two to the composite side. Take two to the composite that. side. Yeah. Okay, so that's as you see the composite side being noted as Hillcrest here, yes. but it will be the composite side I know. that I'm are two shots ahead of Putaradu at the, the conclusion of the first the end. Button. So Tony Gray has really? rolled the jack up. <laughs> and it's gone underneath the screen. There's skill on that. 
Plus it really needs just a little bit of tension on it. Needs to uh, pull the, the scrum a little bit tighter. Not all wasted. Here's Chen Nadia. Young farm out of Bulmer's Landing. I got Jeff to try and explain to me where Bulmer's Landing was around Arapuni, and uh, my eyes glazed over. God, I know well because I'm a Putatalu boy myself, so <laughs> no bias being shown here, by the way. Impartiality. Lose a couple, mate. the hand he doesn't look happy with it yeah you got your line going good mate no i don't think he was happy with that he knew that it uh i mean the, the green was it. fine it's just the pace of the bowl yeah, sort of shrug of the shoulders but a real nice encouragement too though from but the skip right the, the skip really did still encouragement and said it wasn't really all wasted chin has got a beautiful fluid motion really quite a, you, you explained it's quite tight to the leg yes he is yeah Okay, mate, he's late again. Let's make it count. How many years did Chente have been playing? Nine years. He's been playing nine years, young farmer. <clears throat> but uh, have you just noticed Jeff's uh, competitive attitude already? Let you in. You know what Let's to get do. Get speed out of the hand, mate. And to be fair, Tony whispered to me, uh, we're in this to win. <laughs> so <laughs> you know where this composite composition uh, are at, and that is yeah, how you get shots. So just watch this movement. You, you describe this to me. Like, this looks really fluid. It's almost like he brushes the ankle. He does. He gets his hand very, very close to his, uh, uh, to his lower leg. And he's played that particularly well. So the composite team hold a shot and lead by two. This is the second hand of 12. <laughs> Judy Ma, she reminded me that she plays indoor bowls with my own mother, who said she, my own mother, was and a pretty, a pretty handy indoor bowler. So and you I, didn't know? I didn't know. To be fair, there you go. That's you don't have to out me straight away, pal. <laughs> <laughs> this is chair fence and the skip for the composite team plays out of Putaru, but playing in the Hillcrest Comp. We'll call it the Hillcrest Composite. No, it's now the Composite. That's good. Well, it's interesting because Tony Gray is also a member of Claudelands. Being the green keeper at both the Hillcrest and Claudelands bowling clubs, uh, you only bring one yeah. banana can? He's, a, he's able to play in... Um, you only bring one banana for you? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Anson just... Uh, he's, he's just checking that the there's a banana back there for him. <laughs> but Tony Gray has... Uh, played regularly for both Hillcrest and for Claudelands. Jeff's job will be just to come inside the blue bowl and uh, add to the count. Well, you'd suggest that's not a bad bowl. That's that quite one, a good though. bowl. It does present a little bit of a target, but again, you've got to be very accurate to be able to pick those up bowls off. So she's decided, Judy Ma, to come on the backhand of this bowl. And that's got a lot of promise. That's got a lot of promise. That is a bowl and a half. So they've gone from two down to one up, Putaradu, on the back of that bowl from Judy Ma. That will make up for the, shall we say, the loose bowl in the yeah. last end. We'll leave that one out. She won't want reminding about that. But that uh, makes up for it in spades. Working every 
Griffey for thinking for this. Oh, it's a toucher, but it's not enough. Still shot held by Putaradu. So this is the it final might, bowl. It, it might even be two bowls, two shots. I think you're on the money, but she doesn't want to touch that too much. But that's a good, that's a, you've got to call that two, don't you? Let's just check where the marker is. There's Peter Porter, guys. Whoa, hang on a moment. That's three. It is. That's a fine end for Putaradu. So at the end of two, it's Putaradu three. And the composite between Putaradu and Hillcrest two. So... Wow, that's leading from the front from Judy Ma. We don't mind that, do we? And that shows how bowls can, uh, the lead can change so easily. <laughs> so Chen Nordia with the jack is a favourable length, almost a standard length. It is. That's a, that's a mid-length. Don't tell her, though. One of those awkward ones where it's just onto the scrum. <laughs> So you get your ball onto the scrum and then slow it down. So nothing to write home about that bowl for Chen or Dia in the opening bowl of this third end. Tony Gray. First half's good. Second half's even better. Very good bowl from Tony Gray. Nothing needs to be said because the skip said it all, didn't he? First half's good, second half's even better from Jeff Anson. This is a very, very good bowl too. Oh, oh. It just curled away at the last minute. Here, Same time. You, Anywhere in here. If he'd been able to hit the green bowl directly, he would have punched the jack back to where they had a bowl waiting. I think Jeff Hansen has recognised the... Uh, the danger, and so he's touch, got mate. Tony to well put done. a ball back there. Slight twist of the wrist as the ball the ball comes out of the hand from Chen Nordia out of Putaradu. He really wants that toucher, doesn't he? He's really he's got on either side of toucher. it. Yeah, just beat your last. Good stuff, mate. So it's 3 2 Putarad on the back of that three shot end, which was the second. This is the. You know what I find funny? They're whispering, but we can hear it. We can indeed. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see a selection that Judy makes now. Whether she'll just try and draw the jack off the head or whether she will try to play onto the shot bowl and punch the jack back a little bit. It's a choice she has to make. Oh, going onto the backhand. Do you think that was a late minute change? It was probably a late change. She probably felt more comfortable playing on the backhand. Now she's got second shot, which allows her to play on the forehand if she wants to. Then you got one. 
I'll just draw another one. No shortage of confidence. But I was just going to say, that's the confidence of Jeff. I'll just draw another one, just like that. Love a toucher, I'd say. Nice little nudge to push that ball. She stayed on the backhand, so she just resisted the temptation of uh, playing on the forehand and giving the ball a bump. But the hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Oh, how close was that? By the same token, crazy. Jeff Jeff has to be careful as well. Because they hold one shot. But any any wrong nudge, and that's going to go back into Judy's bowl. sort of, ah, the sigh of, no, it's not exactly what I wanted. No, she changed her hand onto that forehand and she doesn't play it with quite the same, same degree know. of confidence. If I, if I set that bowl, it'll count. <laughs> not going to hit her, guys. Opposite side holding the shot to try and draw level here. They may have picked up no danger of that, I'm another, not so I think it'll just be the single. Yes, it is the single to the composite, so that is at the end of our third. We are all locked up at three all. So nice, tight little, little game early on. Considering the last it match where Blockhouse Bay shot out to the lead and then got literally run home. And run that, down. And this is uh, taking a different course and it could be even all the way through. I love how uh, bowlers, any sports people that are confident, it's also a bit of a ruse because they're probably not always uber confident of what they're doing. But, but anyway. we'll, we'll do that anyway. We'll tell them that we're so, going to do that anyway. You know? Oh mm. yes, they'll, they'll pass a message on as almost as if they could, uh, if the opposition listens to it, you got um, it. It was like when he, Jeff said, oh, like, I'll just draw another one. Yes. Confident as anything, and yes. didn't do it, but no, there you go. Mind. Track, mate. That's, the <laughs> That's exactly right. Chen Nordia from Putaralu. <laughs> this is tracking nicely, but I wonder if it's got too much gas on it. Oh, it has. Ah, uh, if I was buying me the timber off you, yeah, I'd be short change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what you're up against now, that, don't you? That's why he's in the electricity department. <laughs> that again looks like it's got a bit too much heat. Just got to be conscious all the time that uh, the two skips that are down the, the other end at the moment are wearing the same shirt, mm -hmm. uh, having well representing Patararu, but they're playing against each other. Tony Gray with a better bowl this time. That's that'll be a nice setup bowl. Here we go. When you have a bowl 
a level with the jack uh, to the right or the left, it's a bowl which the opposition can actually work off. And Chen might try and do that. Just a little touch on the side of it. Would, he won't need to. I don't he's think he's going to need to. A oh, little light. A little light on it. Only takes one, mate. It's, it's like a it's like a rolling cliche. Quite enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the joys of miking up the skips. I, I, I'm telling you now, Jeff Anson is a poker player. He's playing poker here. So it's all locked up. We're in the second half of this fourth end. Three all Putaradu against the composite side of Hillcrest and the man right there, the skip uh, from Putaradu, Jeff Anson. From the composite team. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, that scrum. That scrum. I was wondering whether it was going to hold it up, but it's hasn't. That's a nice first bowl. Help. Chen. 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 Is that how far short? That far. Okay. <laughs> That's what it's all about, teamwork. And you know who's in charge? That's Judy Ma. Skip for potato do. You see, I, I look at Jeff Anson and this pairs as the poker player, and Judy Ma is the silent assassin. Oh, good. She won't give anything away. Good eye. She'll just deliver. I would imagine she's played against Jeff several times before, so she will know exactly what he might be up to. Well, have you noticed she's not reacting to anything? No, that little bit of scrum is a bit, yes, they're going to put in another good idea. There's a, there's a green keeper who recognised the danger of that, so he's going to put another little tack into the edge of the scrum. much heat. A couple of back bowls. Chen Nudia letting Judy know what he wants. And she's played a forehand this time. It's one that she'd been avoiding a little bit. It's a tight, it has to be tight, but it's you've got to split the difference and she's not able to split the difference and again just a little bit too much pace on it as well it was had too had too much pace she just gave a little bit of a flick at the at the start and uh, propelled it a bit too much she's not that nasty <laughs> there we go mind games again <laughs> judy just turned away and ignored it <laughs> Similarly, Jeff will know how Judy plays and probably knows that she's not <laughs> going to she's not going to have a full-blooded drive. He'll try she's and push her there. buttons as much as he can, and she's not going to bite. Uh, that, that's probably his style. I, I think you're right, my friend. Oh, you know when she said that? Oh, no, Judy, where's it going? So let's just check it out. That'll be, despite that, it is two for Putaradu. So Putaradu get the two shots at the end of the fourth, and they lead the composite team 5-3 at the Clinico Spring Classic. Remember Clinico, Dench and Herring restoring confidence for 50 years. And we might have that score back to front because the, um, be the composite team... Are the composite... Oh, there it is. Yeah, no, yeah, our, yeah, my, our, my apologies. We've been given the wrong... The composite team actually had the, had the two shots. So that was just a little little, a little a flick from the old uh, lollipops. We'll have a quick word to Peter. Yes. You know, it's probably the same. Uh, uh, look, he knows. <laughs> That's okay, mate. So it's 5-3 to the composite, correct? Yes. 5-3 to the composite. Just a little bit of a... 
a slip there. Our apologies for that. And Tony's actually delivered quite a long jack, not quite maximum. You can see just from over. You better practice your camera rights. Well, there you are. He's not getting a lot of credit for what he's doing here. Yeah, take no prisoners, Jeff Anson. Chen Nordia. So just confirmation of that score at the end of four. It's the composite team, five, and Putaradu, three, here at the Morrinsville Bowling Club, Clinico Spring Classic on a glorious Sunday afternoon. Green in your green and your white, Chen. Stephen McIver, and Barry was, Hooper. And was that Jeff actually giving encouragement to his opposition? <laughs> Come inside that one, Jim. Simple instructions from Judy Ma for Chen Nodia. Yes, nothing too elaborate. Just come inside that one and I'll have the shot. Easier said than done, though. Oh, it certainly is. Good stuff, mate. Come again. Just draw into here. Now, Chen gave that just a little bit more green than his last one. Can you squeak inside that green bowl? No, he can't. Still moving across. Yeah. So both, both the snutters, both the skips taking a good look. Wait for it. What's she going to say? Two. Oh, yeah. it's all right. <laughs> so Jeff Hansen says they are holding two, which seems fair enough. Correct. Yes. And Judy's about to change it. Five three, the composite team led by this man, Skip Jeff Hansen. Oh, a little bit of a smile there. Or is that a grimace? <laughs> Who was it you called? The uh, the silent assassin? Uh, Judy Ma. Yeah. Judy Ma. Maybe the role has changed. Need it to be. squeak by that jack but it'll potentially give them another shot Judy Ma she's still playing on that forehand she doesn't get the ball away quite so evenly on the forehand she more consistent on the back although this one has got a good track when you talk about giving it more green it's going to have a little bit more than Chen did and might get the, the bounce Sometimes when bowlers see an open side uh, in front of the jack, they feel as though that's the, the best way to go. But often to play onto a bowl, on the, uh, for example, on the backhand in this case, that away, um, yeah. could push a bowl through. Now he's given it plenty of green, and I mean plenty of green. So that jack is just sitting wide open saying, come and get me. Yes, just here. If Judy actually played on the backhand, she could play onto her own bowl or push Tony Gray's bowl through and turn a one down into two up. That, that bowl, that bowl needs need to, to slow up. That needs to slow up.
again, too much green. Yeah, in case he's you get a, he's a little bit out in the boondocks there. Is the thinking here, maybe they're comfortable thinking they can hold that too? Well, I think it's only one to the composite team. Oh, there's that. Oh, Judy, you know when she says, oh, she's not happy. So, let's see if it's one or two to the composite. Oh, out comes the measure. The skips waiting intently. Oh, so, so Tony Gray brings out the measure. This probably is for one or two. It is. They've got one. He's done a quick measure by a visual. Now a more accurate measure by tape. And of course you're not allowed to use a tape until the ends, all the balls have been completed. So there's the confirmation. It'll be a two to the composite team. Peter will put up the lollipops. There you go. Confirmation. Two to the composite team at the completion of the fifth the end. <laughs> and it will be the composite team seven and Putaru three at the best of 12 ends at this Clinico Spring Classic at the Morrinsville Bowling Club. Tony Gray then with the jack. Let's see what length we have on this end. Remembering, of course, we've got the championship fours after this, the, the championship match to follow this pairs. Again, the winners of this match, points will go to a crew to see if their four will make the final. Way to start the end. Yes, and Chen's Gray. been forced onto the backhand for him. It won't worry him because he can play either side. Do some bowlers uh, struggle playing both sides? They do. Really? Yes. Well, I mean, were you a forehand or a backhand? I mean, or were you, were you comfortable I, on both sides? I was coached to be comfortable on both sides. And basically, the, the, the process of bowling is exactly the same. You just simply move your feet. It's up to you. This camera there. It's interesting, we commented about the, the bowl um, continuing to skid on a little bit when it hits the, uh, the scrim. The natural surface slows it down. It's got a little bit of a holding. Yeah, that's a good bowl from Shin. That's a good bowl. There's a shot bowl. Uh, counting anyway. Now Jeff has commented that it's it's already counting, so you're not going to. The only thing you're going to do if you play onto it is move it closer. So he's basically saying, "Don't bother about that. Continue to play well onto it." Tony. Answer me this question: Was the forehand well, was the forehand an option there? Right yes, it, yes, it was. But the but the but and that's their that's their the, own the bowl. Green bowl their so own green bowl sitting in the way there, right? Was the issue? Uh, ideally, he could have come just inside that bowl and rested on the other the bluish bowl on the right. So the leads have He's played this pretty well too. Done their job, and let's potentially that's two shots for Putaru. I think they're holding two. And, and pretty good too as well. Now this is this is uh, an opportunity for Jeff to possibly play quite aggressively. <laughs> you want him to, don't you? Well, it's he's he's got a lot of confidence in his uh, in his sharp bowls, and 
he may not. He may just decide to put a ball in position to start off with. So we're in the sixth end. The composite team, this is the skip. Part of the composite playing out of Putaru against Putaru. They lead 7-3. Uh, he's just playing a draw weight again. When you think of the skill to bring that ball right around and try and get it close to the jack, there's a and look at that. I mean, a little bit more, a little bit more weight. I wondered if he was actually trying to put a ball back on the two meter mark. Could be a critical end this for Putaru. Yes, it could be. Got a good line too, good track. Got a very good track. Can you get in the middle of there, Judy? Oh, how about that? We'll take that any day of the week. Yep. That could be three shots. I play a runner through there. There you are. <laughs> Jeff is going to actually... Uh... Too easy. <laughs> too easy. Here we go. Let's see how easy it is. Let's see he he's hasn't made. asked what bowls are closest to, to the two metre mark. Is he playing poker? He's And he's also played it with a degree of control, but he's going to go past and take one of his own balls out. So, not as easy as he thought it might be. Now, Judy Mars coming back onto the forehand. Slow down, slow down. I think she I was looking. Take ours out clean, eh? Which one am I looking for? Which one am I trying to hit? Instructions given. Let's this, see if he can. This is more of a drive. Uh, that's that wide one. of the mark. Well wide of the mark. Now, big bowl here for Judy. The suggestion is they're holding three. I would say so. She could make this four and it could be all locked up. Looked a little wide. Yeah. But you'll take the three if you get them. <coughs> two, I think, dude. Oh, hang on, someone's saying two, but is it going to be three? Tony is saying two. Chen's going. <laughs> Chen's saying I'm going to measure. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> you want to measure? Hang on, two. can see it from here is only two. Well, guess what? Potato would well, like to measure, Tony, so let's measure. So it's just the two for Potato, but it's two they certainly needed <laughs> after six ends. So they're just inching their way back in, so it's the composite team seven, that'll be Putaru five, as we head into end number seven. Ah, oh, there was a bit on that one, wasn't there? Hey? The halfway through. Halfway through. <laughs> so the chin is getting another a nice roll of the jack. Yeah, so that was the length that they quite enjoyed last time. What's, so what's interesting, if you remember in the last game that we saw between Blockhouse Bay and Tiamutu, uh, there was a the early the, around this point, they were quite happy to play short ends, just to try and yes. mix it up a little bit. We've yes. seen none of that. And I would have no. expected at least one of these teams to maybe try and play that card just to see to unsettle them. But that's a that's a confidence thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, you, you, you deliver the jack in a position where you know you can bowl to. 
and it may well be that they're not happy with a, a particularly long end, um, but they haven't gone really short either. That's short. That's not what Tony Gray would have wanted at no. all. I'm inside. So fluid. So fluid to watch that bowl come out of Chen's hand. And a nice bowl to boot as well. So that'll be a, a shot ball. I find it quite fascinating looking at bowling styles and, the, and how the and how the the bowl is released from the hand. I was Good watching speed. Tony Gray there. There's almost like a, a stop at the end of the at the yeah, end yeah. of the release. It was it was quite predictable that that ball was actually going to cross the centre line fairly quickly. Now that's got much more green. And it's coming in, he's going to give himself another shot. This has been a good end for Chen Nodia. Very good end. So yes. been more more consistent end than we've seen, in fairness, uh, to this point in the game. Now. Tony has decided to go on to the backhand. That looked quite wide too, but Tony's bowl is uh, quite wide drawing. So maybe that's two shots now. Maybe that's two. I think it's two. At this end or there. So that's... Keeping Did it nice you? and quiet. Hold on to it. <laughs> so seven five, the composite team, Hillcrest Putaru against Putaru in this Sprinico Kling Cl Spring Classic, a Clinico Spring Classic. Clinico uh, Dench and Herring restoring confidence for fifty years as Judy Ma opens up in the seventh end. You know as soon as the bowl leaves Judy's hand whether she's happy or not because you're always but hearing the bad ones. Most, most bowlers know that uh, what their bowl's going to do is that if they, if they follow it intently, then you know that they probably think they've got a good bowl. Yeah. If they turn their back on it, <laughs> yeah. it's rubbish. You know straight away with Judy. Which is quite interesting because we generally coach bowlers to watch their bowl whether it be good or bad because you learn from your bad ones. He's not happy with that. He's not happy with that, you could tell that. He's giving his right hand a bit of a shake. Yeah, Judy that's quite a, second a, That's Sorry. quite bold, but, uh, wide. I use this but it's, coming a long, it's coming a long way, and it's very close to that two metre spot in case the bowl, the jack is uh, yeah, killed. Yeah, I don't like foot. We used the term scattergun in the first game, and this has been a bit of a scattergun end. It, yes. Bowlers struggling just to find their length on the jack. This is a better looking bowl. A much better looking bowl, but a little bit too much heat on it. So, was, wasn't so Chen is going to give Here's the shot either, Judy an idea where to go. Hit my foot. No, not going to work. A little bit too wide. Might curl around a little bit, but it'll just be... Oh, Only one down now. So he knows there a bowl down, shot down. Well, if I get the weight. 
be great if you get the weight because the weight looks uh, not half bad, but oh, crikey. Self-diagnosed. <laughs> hey. That's the singles. <laughs> yeah, Judy That's won't be happy about that because she had a chance to make it three and instead she just rolled the opposition bowl over. But you'll take you'll take the single. Yep. You will certainly take the single, and that will give Putaru another shot. So they're inching their way towards the seven shots that the Combers have earned. So as we head into the eighth end, it's seven six to the composite side over Putaru. Chen Nordeal, the role of the Jack. I'd like to see a short end. I would too. Going to be just onto the scrum. Really concentrates on that release. He's been pretty consistent throughout the, the game. He's had he's had the green, has just been wrestling a little bit with the length. But that's a pretty good opener. He's not happy with that. Just threw his hand to the side and ugh. He was not happy as soon as that bowl left his hand. But will the result be better than he thinks? Came back a lot more than you thought it did. You can come either way. Got one. Different makes of bowls uh, cause bowls some to go a little bit narrower than than others. Now Tony's got a bowl that's in between. It, it's uh, a little bit more wide drawing than. Some of the more modern bowls. Wouldn't narrow it up too much. What sort of skip did you, uh, did you like have? Did you like a talkative skip? Or were you always the skip? No, no, I certainly wasn't always the skip. Well, on um, revolution. I, I, I quite like a skip who's um, oh, got a slide past. All good. He likes an encouraging I, 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 skip. I, yes, you, everybody likes an encouraging skip, and you like a skip to be able to help you visualise what the head looks like. So they give you a bit of a picture to say, well, this are, these are the positions, and you, you like to know, to be fairly fairly precise. Um, when you're asking about the visualisation, though, is that, is, is that when you can't see the head? Uh, it's probably all the time. For example, uh, the skip would be conveying the message on this particular yeah, head. Yeah, I'd say, who's got the shot bowl, and a, and precisely how far away it is over, beyond the jack or short of the jack. Always change the green if you like. And then they might suggest the pathway that you should take, or where they. It's sometimes better to to tell the bowler, your teammate, where you want the bowl to finish, and then let them work it out how they're going to get it there. Who holds shot? Do you think? I think Patararu holds shot. Um, in fact, they could hold two shots. Well, both skips have gone very quiet, so when you can probably understand why, uh, considering the state of the game that we're at, 7-6, and Patararu have scored in the last two ends. This is their skip, Judy Ma at the Clinico Spring Classic, the Morrinsville Bowling Club. It's Sunday, the 2nd day of October 2022. There's a $5,000 prize pool, but it is a fours competition, and the championship game will follow this pairs. All these pairs are counting points towards whether their four can make the final. Don't think he was happy with that. Yeah, there was a slight grunt of disgust, was. wasn't there? Just like a.
Judy pushed that out a little bit because she didn't want to promote those two opposition bowls. But she didn't want to come on the other hand because if she picks up the jack, she could also give it away. It wasn't a grunt that time, so he might have been happier yeah, with it. Yeah, and look at the position he's holding. Bit of style, just holding this, holding it, this, this, yeah, look, just jiggling it on. No, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. <laughs> Same bowl in the end. <laughs> I think he summed it up. Yeah, but he's pretty relaxed about it too. But uh, we know, because we are privy, we know uh, this composite pair are keen on the win. Oh, well, they made that quite clear. So you would have seen in the foreground of that picture Tony Gray saying, pointing to the other side. So. Yes, he's actually no, saying. No, mate, I'm going to draw it. Too much to go around there, and it's tight. They're all, they're all his, so he could actually play on to them, and he only got to promote one or two. That's when the skip says, oh, thanks for the advice, but no thanks. That's right. He's, he's, which puts the pressure on the skip, because if he doesn't uh, then uh, execute, he's <laughs> If he trouble. doesn't draw, who's the mug? <laughs> and he hasn't drawn. <laughs> Told you he was a poker player. <laughs> Told you he was a poker player. Let's just yeah. check on how many shots we get that's i'm seeing two i'm seeing two that's right two to putaradu so confirmation putaradu have zipped back into the lead and as we enter the ninth end it'll be eight seven putaradu over the composite team who would have thought hey who would have thought that's what it looks like from chen's end and this is the jack rolled up to his skip. Oh, we'll see the length of this. And it's going to be a longer one. It is. I know you and I are sort of hanging out for a short one. But but maybe the maybe uh, this they are playing within their comfort zone. And to see that the length of the jack is the only thing you can control because the mat goes in a fi fixed position every time when there is scr a scrum down. So explain again for folks that are watching, the reason for the scrim there is because? Uh, the scrim actually protects the ground from uh, the bumps of the bowl. As the bowl goes, as the bowl hits down, it can, br uh, at early in the season in particular, it can cause, it can cause bruising of the green. And then it takes a week or two, a couple of weeks to okay. recover. It's not because there was a lot of rain and it could have softened everything up? No, uh, I mean it will, it will be soft from from that, but yeah. it just it's round that delivery of the jack area where uh, there's a lot of foot traffic, and the d bowls got, are mate? delivered. Uh, there is a school of thought that suggests that by putting scrim down, you're bowling off the same spot all the time. Therefore, you might be doing as much damage as if it was there or not. We might have to talk to Trevor Lingard, the green well, about that. Well, it's one of those things where the uh, rank and file bowler would generally avoid talking about the scrum because the green keepers are supposedly no best. <laughs> Have you ever thought of going to politics? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> are you sure about that? Oh uh, yeah, I probably... <laughs> I, th I, think, I think my grandfather probably uh, was in politics a little bit. Yeah. Well. Um, Probably like the one of the, the farmers' like unions or something rather up in the um, uh, Walkworth area. There's a bowl that's uh, pretty nice. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the size of it. Yes, lunch has just turned up, and I've got to say, Barry's just a little bit excited. So this is... I think we'll have to wait. Another bowl from Chen. Well, we're in the ninth end, and it's tight. And found his, he's found his rhythm, too. He has, and he's... It's taken he, a while, let's be fair. He's, he bowled, he's really bowled very consistently, and he's, he's set things up for Judy admirably throughout yeah, this game. Set the ball. But he's coming into his own now. Yeah. You draw it there, you can get the shot. Okay, skips had a final say. Tony, 
you can almost read his uh, his face. He would love to have a drive at that. Do you, you obviously, you've been hanging out for a drive all afternoon, he, and yeah. we haven't seen one. No. He, well, no, we saw one. We did see one, and it was wide. And we've seen a little bit over, but he didn't take his rein. So, but Jeff won't be able to resist it. If that's if they're three shots, are, you, are we calling three maybe for potato do right now? Certainly two. Yeah, but we can't have a go if there's nothing on the head. I... Okay, oh, a little dissension in the ranks, maybe. Do you think? Yeah, uh, I would. Just su subtle. Very subtle. Yes, I would say Judy might be able to try and put in a little bit of a block to force the drive. That's what you want a block to force a drive. If you if you put a block in. You still have the drive, but there's a chance that if you hit it, your bowl will just uh, be deflected off somewhere else. It's really to protect the three shots that she's got. resisted the temptation to drive he's now trying to draw to reduce the count on three Not occasions he's called to draw and he hasn't been able to deliver on his promise and that would be an annoying for a half decent bowler wouldn't it wanting to draw Most knowing you can draw and then you just can't find that usually what happens is that they have a little bit of a rush of blood to the head and they have a full-blooded drive it doesn't work so they resort to a draw to a yeah. draw which it's interesting it's interesting here too particularly with pairs as we see judy ma put a nice little well is that, is that your blocker that's the block so now he hasn't got the freedom of the the drive as such he's looking at backhand isn't he he's, he's going to go back he's going to go backhand Yeah, this look, this looks okay. It does look okay, but this it looks might, like a good might be a bowl, bit Barry. Ooh, he may have cut. He will have cut. Certainly cut one out. Yeah. Oh, she's she's given it the oh. I've she's not it. happy about that she's either. Not happy. She knows. She'll be happy with it if the jack's built over to where it is. Back on the backhand for Jeff Anson. Try again. It, and that looked quite narrow. <coughs> So the question will be at two or three, have they got the two? It's, is it just the two? Oh, he wants, does Chen want to measure? He does I think, want to I, measure. I think Chen wants to squeeze everything out of this. It's just the two. So it's just the two for Putaradu. Tony, Tony could be saying to Chen, well, if you want it, you measure it. So they extend their lead, Putaradu. And as we enter the 10th end, it'll be 10-7 against the composite team. So that was a much tidier end from Chen. Chen set that up. He, uh, he had bowls beyond the head, and he, he really set it up so that the others then, the initiative uh, was, uh, they had to work on um, trying to disturb it. And they weren't able to do that. Now, here's a shorter end. Right, so, so now this is, this, is this a ploy? Are we calling this a ploy, do you think? Well, I think Chen enjoys the shorter end, and I'm surprised that it hasn't come sooner. Okay. So this will be fun to watch. Let's see if the shorter end works for Putaradu, who are leading. Again, he's 
played it pretty well, just a little bit heavy. That's a good starter bowl. That's a good opening okay. bowl. That's a good opening bowl. Seem to like that short end, Tony. It's probably where Chen would have liked it. His first bowl. Yeah, Chen gave him a little bit of an opening there that uh, had Chen put his bowl where he wanted it, uh, then that would have reduced the option for, uh, for Tony. But he's made amends. It's another superb bowl from Chen. So at critical points in the last three or four ends, Pratatatu have delivered what they were wanting after going down early in this game. Now I wonder as far as the composite team are concerned how important well, it will be. This is an important end. That's a nice bowl from Tony Gray. Well, the, pos the position is for Pratatatu with the blue bowl holding shot. The composite team can't really shift the ball, so they have to draw to beat. So they've got to draw it and come inside them. So it takes away. Um, if they played onto the jack, they could move the jack back. But they've just about lost that opportunity now, where because Chen's put a ball at 11 o'clock, as we look at it. And so they've removed that side, that option from that, that forehand side. And so now he has to play on the backhand. But it's opened the door. It has. All right, well, he's, let's see if he knocks on it and walks through. And he's he played onto his own bowl. He's played that pretty well. That's a really tidy bowl. Now tidy bowl. Now they've got the shot. And it'll be Judy's chance to actually still play on that backhand and try and push Tony Gray's bowl through. So this is end number 10 of 12. And Pratata to have got back into the lead on the last two ends and they now lead 10-7 against the composite. Their skip is Judy Ma looking to the heavens. I don't see any grey sky. No, I think it's looked fairly, fairly settled. Not going to wish anything upon us after the weather they've had here in the last 48 hours in Morrinsville. Well, I don't think the farmers would be too unhappy. All that lush green grass through the Waikato is gorgeous to drive through. Well, to look at, I'm not driving through the grass. Ooh. Jeff could still play on the forehand if he wanted to. He's chosen to stay on the backhand. Danger is that if he moves, touches one of the blue balls or the jack, he could move the jack towards the blue balls or move a, b a blue ball towards the jack. So he's that's why he stayed on that backhand. It's still wide open here. It is wide open. You, there are there are choices there, and it's it's what sort of a choice they make. Judy's going to cut the gap here, and that's that's a bowl that is not what she wanted. Yeah, but if I'm tight, I knock that one in. That's. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dead draw it. Yeah, we've heard that before. Don't yes, wish and, me rude. And, it, and he knows that if he, if he knocks on that blue one, it's not what he wants. Good attempt. This is a great. This is a great attempt. That's a great bowl from the skip from the composite team. That is a great bowl. It is. Unfortunately for him, what he's done is he's moved one in and one out. One shot. It's one shot. But if Judy came down, I'm not sure what hand she's going to play it on. She's going to stay on the back. Yeah, she, she is, isn't she? It looks like it. Might be having second thoughts about it. I think we're no. She's going on the backhand. 
She is, Always and if she, and if she moved that green ball forward. She's not tight Very enough. Close. That's not tight enough. She could have made, almost put the game out of reach. So this to keep the composite team just sniffing at the heels of Putaradu. Oh. <laughs> you know what that means. That That's means going that nowhere near the that head. That was not a good ball. That's not the ball I was wanting. I think we'll call that one early. I think we're confident of that. And it's the single, just the single to the composite team after 10 ends. So it'll be 10-8 to Putaru as we enter the 11th end here at the Morrinsville Bowling Club in the Clinico Spring Classic, a $5,000 prize pool the championship fours following this game. As Tony Gray, the lead for the composite team, plays out of Hillcrest, combining with Jeff Anson, who is out of Putaru, playing against his own club. And they have decided a longer end might be appropriate. But they'll bring it back. But it is a longer end. It is a longer end, and it shows that the scrum is not actually entirely on the two metre mark. It's just a little bit up from the two metre mark. He wasn't happy about that bowl either. See, when it's crossing the centre line at that point, it's just going to keep good. on going. It's so easy to play good bowls from here. The couch. I was about to say, I was going, wondering where you're going. Yeah, <laughs> couch expert. Well, yes. you, are, you are the expert, so that's okay. And Chen has bowled that superbly. He's got a toucher in that. Perfect opening bowl for Chen Nordia of Putaru. They're leading by two shots in the 11th end. He would have liked to have fallen in right in front of the jack, but that's okay, or behind it. Getting interested. <laughs> that's far more. Green, he's very, it's a much better bowl. Oh, squeezes past. So, Potato do holding the one shot. Opening, opening bowls in this 11th end. And Judy would love Chen to actually just move the jack fractionally behind his first bowl. So another good bowl for Chen. This is Tony Gray for Hillcrest and the composite team. Oh, he's gone for it. He's gone for it. He's going to be wide of the mark, though. Well wide of the mark. So he's had his three bowls. Are you surprised at that early in the in, the, in this well, end? Well, not necessarily. Uh, because sometimes the skip may have called for that. If, had he picked up, the, if, if he'd hit one of the shot bowls or picked up the the jack, it probably would have been into the ditch and he would have been quite safe. But now Chen will try and cover that. All right, so Putada do in the box seat at this particular point in the end, holding two shots. They lead by two in this 11, 10 8 against the composite side. Quite crucial because if, the, if there was no change to the position at the moment, they would be then going into the last end four shots down. So the skips to do the job now. Can Jeff Anson bring the composite side closer to Putaradu with one end to play after this? I don't think he would have been overly happy with that either. No, he wouldn't. However, the position that Judy has to be uh, aware of is that 
the composite team now have two bowls. Has two bowls close to the ditch. And if the jack goes back into the ditch, they'll be in their count. So she needs to come around and try and cover. Do you think that was the intention of that bowl? Which is wow. exactly what she's done. She's come and she's bisected those two other bowls. So at least she's... Uh, and it's in a new it's a nuisance position and it's also counting so these guys have to make sure they either do get their target and that's not going to that's, that's going to right. slip by as well so the silent assassin Judy Maher is doing yes, her job just see, just quietly no fuss now she would be probably safer to take the ball she's got and put another one back towards the ditch. She hasn't done that. She's... This ball could actually count. <laughs> this could be a great count. <laughs> this, yeah, now... <laughs> now, what does this force Jeff Anson to do? Right, this is forcing. This is going to force his hand, isn't it? It is, because it's if he misses this... As a, with a drive, it gets game over. Well, let's see what he does. Is he going for it? Yeah. He has played with a little bit of purpose, and he's wide, and he's going to take out one of these other bowls. I think he's going to go straight past. Yep, and it's going to give three shot, four shots to Patararu, and she's got a bowl to come, so now she can draw this and put the, the game completely out of reach. Yeah, I think I think she wants and she more, has wants more points. She does. So the, the skips <laughs> come to play. She's. Hang on a minute. Yep, two. Three. I'm Peter with four. Four. Hang on. Five. Wait for. Hang on. He's, oh yeah, he's not going to give away the fifth, is he? Wait for it. <coughs> five. Five. That's a five for Patarudu on the 11th end. Which is most unusual for a, um, a pairs event. But you take it any day of the week. Certainly. So with one end to play, Patarudu race ahead 15-8 against the composite team. And they will roll the jack out. Would you not love to see just one short end? Not going to get it, though. No, we're not, are we? Not going to get it. No. Yeah. And, of course, now Patararu cannot lose. The composite team cannot win, but they're now playing for pride and for overall points to see where their end position might be on the table. Another superb opening from Chen. And isn't this the interesting development in this game? That is, he's started slow to find his rhythm. Yes. And has found his rhythm. And he's probably been the dominant player. They've complemented each other nicely, Judy and Chen from Putaradu. Yes. No fuss, not too much noise, no, just I, gone about their business. I think Judy's manner has probably just given Chen confidence and he's just, and he's played the shots that he's needed to play and she's then been able to uh, capitalize on them nothing beats in any sport consistency correct so she's tight she's happy with that yeah it's jack level but, uh, It's not far away, it just looks further away than it uh, that really is. This is a tidy bowl coming in from Tony Gray now. Just needs to hold up a bit. If these are thumbs up from Jeff Hansen in the front of your screen. He's happy about that. That's probably the shot bowl.
Just runs there a little short. Yes, and once they get on the scrum, they do just run on. So a bit of the life's come out of this this game at this 12th end. Uh, Jeff Hansen's gone all quiet knowing they're done. Well, it's interesting because both Tony and Jeff are um, accomplished singles players in their own right. And when you put two singles players together and play in a pair, uh, mm -hmm. they should be able to play pretty well and understand the game. Yeah, they might be feeling a little bit depressed. Well, there you can see is the scoreboard on the green, 15-8. That is the score for Pitardu. We're in the 12th end. And the buzzer has gone for times up, but considering that we are on the TV rink, we will continue to finish this game off. Once the buzzer goes, you finish the end that you planned on anyway, and the timing's pretty good because <laughs> this will end the end the 12 ranks, so we'll be right. So that's gone a bit wide. I don't think Judy will be too upset. I, I, wonder, I wonder sometimes when you're in a position where you're, you're well ahead and you, you you bowl an errant bowl, do you get upset with yourself knowing that you've already won, won the, the game? Yes, you probably do uh, because it's looking for perfection. But knowing that you've won the game also, you often play with greater confidence and you know, well, I, there's nothing hanging on it and you relax and you play some of your best bowls. She wants that, she wants the touch there. She gets it too. Oh, oh yes. Lovely. How good, how good. Now there's a very good example of a wing bowl or a bowl out to the side of the jack. You just use it and it just you just work off it and um, get yourself in a good position. That looked a little narrow as it left Jeff's hand and it'll skirt away. It's also interesting in the first game, I think the total score was 20 shots between the both teams over 12 ends, which means it's one and a bit shots per end. This one's gone a little bit further. They've got 23, and there'll be at least another one, so it's 24. So it averaged out two shots per end. Look at this. Judy Ma's going to do it again. Oh, I thought that was I thought that was going to get the touch. Oh, she's got a little nudge. Got, they've got That's three balls in a ball. row there. Final bowl of this second pairs match on Bowls TV. And if you're watching this on Pacifica TV around the Pacific, welcome to Morrinsville, 20 minutes east of Hamilton on a beautiful day. It's a Sunday afternoon, the sun's shining and there's heavy high cloud around, but it certainly has been a wonderful day. And we'll just get that final count. What is that final count? Are they going to bother with the final count? Oh, it's a single. It's a single. Am I right? It's a single. So Putada to get the single. Had to look at Peter wandering up. Couldn't find him. And no, I couldn't find him either. It, <laughs> so it is a single to complete the second pairs match on the TV rink here at Morrinsville. And Putada will win this game 16 points to 8, coming from behind. And, and a nice dominant display. And one has to suggest that Chen Nordia, the lead, set a lot of that second half of the game up. He did. He did it. I think he, he basically controlled it, which uh, it's often said that Piers is a, is a Leeds game, and you could see there it was the, he was getting dominance over his opposition lead, and then the two skips were either having to resurrect or capitalise. So the scoreboard is reset, and we're not too far away from the championship match here at the Clinico Spring Classic. It's a $5,000 prize pool, $1,800 goes to the winner. And remember, Clinico uh, restoring your confidence for 50 years back shortly with the championship showdown. Hey, Grandma, is Grandad playing today? Yes, we both are, love. Why is he taking so long? He's having trouble with his dentures. They don't fit like they used to. 
Granddad, you're making us late. Need to get those dentures fixed, love. Go see Kanika. This is IC Law, or ICLAW. We're lawyers, but we're also mums, dads, sons and daughters. We're people helping people. Need legal advice you can trust? We're here to make the big changes easy and the fine print simple, leaving you free to get on with enjoying the things that matter. Give us a call to see how we can help. Suze and I worked really hard to build up the business. We're making a few careful investments too. And thinking about our family's future. Our next steps. But no rush. Right now we're just taking the scenic route. We're making some memories together.